Good morning, members of the press. I think it is morning. I want to take this opportunity to thank you once again for your tireless effort in making sure that the public gets information from the government. Thank you for supporting us and also thank you for keeping the public informed all the time. I would like also to thank Ugandans who have continued to abide by the existing presidential guidelines on the prevention of COVID-19 because of your obedience towards social distancing, washing hands with soap and keeping at home. Uganda, we have been successful in managing and also preventing the spread of the outbreak in the communities. Yesterday, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, General Yoweli Kaguta Museven, provided the country with a detailed plan that is going to be followed as the country starts on its journey towards opening and also normalizing. I want to use this time again to highlight some of the key aspects in the President's address of yesterday. He said, every person aged six and above will be required to put on a face mask every time they leave their homes into the public. And the Minister of Health will be providing guidelines for the recommended masks to enable even private people who can be in position to provide the, to, 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 to produce these masks as long as they follow the specifications and guidelines from the Ministry of Health. Government will also continue. Government will also continue its plans of producing masks and they will be made available to everyone through the existing local administrative structures. And all shops that sell general merchandise and hotels of any kind will be allowed to resume business on the 25th of May 2020. Public transport such as buses, taxis will be allowed to resume operation on the 4th of June 2020. However, all public transport vehicles will be expected to carry half of their normal passenger numbers, putting emphasis on social distancing and wearing of masks. Owners of private cars will be allowed to start using them on the 26th of May 2020. However, the private cars can only carry a maximum of three people, including the driver, when they resume on the 26th. The Ministry of Education is also expected to come up with a work plan that will inform the reopening of the schools on the 4th of June 2020. However, the night curfew from 7 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. will remain unchanged as of now. There are some areas in Uganda where these changes will not be applied yet because of the dangers that still exist with our that still exist within those areas being high risk areas and some of those areas are the border districts the 40 border districts if you all recall even taxis and public transport in all the border areas will not operate Finally, I want to emphasize that all sectors, such as public transport, shops, hotels, that will be resuming soon, will be expected to follow the strict guidelines on using face masks, social distancing, and sanitizing with soap. There will not be any relaxation of any of these as we continue to return to normalcy. 
I once again thank you for listening to me and also thank you for relaying this information to Ugandans and I want to call upon Ugandans to remain steady because this is a war we are in this together so we want their support and the phases we are now going into we will expect members of the public to be interacting quite oft oftenly with us to give us feedback on how they are finding the guidelines put in place, but also contributing to the implementation of the guidelines set up by government. The use of masks, we would encourage each and every one to use a mask. We have moved around the city, we have seen that compliance is still a little low, so we are urging Ugandans to use masks wherever they are moving in public places and let it be part of us let us not wait for security to enforce this i believe it if it becomes part of us and we embrace it then we shall police ourselves as communities so i want to urge you members of the public please embrace use of masks it is for your own safety not any other person for your own safety for your own protection, for your own good. And that's why you should abide and do it willingly with a lot of love because it has been put in place to help you be protected. With those few remarks, allow me invite Dr. Musenero Monica. She's going to talk about use of masks specifically because we want to give this area ample time for the public to ably understand, internalize, and where possible, ask questions for her to respond. Dr. Musenero, you are welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Minister. I would like to first clarify. I hope you can hear me well through my mask. <laughs> um, I'm not from the Ministry of Health, so uh, I'm from President's Office. Uh, my work is uh, I'm a senior presidential advisor on epidemics, so I advise a cabinet and uh, the president on strategies which we use. Now, um, I want to talk about masks, and after if you have questions, I'll be happy to answer related to masks. So, masks have not been things which are very common in our society. We usually move with our faces seen, we smile, but this disease called COVID has brought a new normal. We are trying the, to find the safest way in which the population can start to do economic activities. And we have looked at many tools that are available because if you remember the president locked down the country, the virus was not yet here, but we were to prepare the people so that they, even when the, when the virus comes, the people will be safe. So one of the tools that we have to use is the mask. I'm sure that many of you don't feel comfortable with the mask. Even me, I'm getting used, but now I know why I have to use a mask. And I'm going to use my mask when I talk, so that people get used to listening when we talk with a mask. Now, why do we have to put on masks? Masks have been used by mostly medical people and maybe people of evil intent who don't want you to recognize them. But now masks are a medical tool. They are here to protect us. We have three types of masks, three. We have the most restrictive one, which they call the N95. Unfortunately, I don't have one. Is that an N95? No, it's not. Now, that mask, the masks uh, 
carry out two things. One, they block access of the air directly to your skin and the things that we have, which enable entry of germs. The other thing the masks do is they control what comes out of you to go out. So, the first category of mask, the N95, it blocks whatever comes out and allows you to breathe through just a small piece, which has a filter, and that filter blocks out 95% of all the germs that would reach you. Now, those masks are for medical people. They are used when the environment where you are is heavily contaminated. And they are difficult to breathe through. Many people, when we try, they are difficult to breathe through. So, we are leaving those masks for the medical people. The other type of mask is the surgical mask. This one here. Now, this mask has two layers. It has just one which is like a fabric. Then it has one side which has a filter. That filter is not as good as the other one, but if you are just walking in the normal air, it will be good enough. But the filter is mostly made to protect the other person. They are called the surgical masks because they help to protect the patient who is being operated from infection coming from the people who are doing the operation. Now, the issue with these masks is that you should use it once and throw it away. You should not keep wearing it. Now, that is going to bring problems for us. One, they're expensive for you to use every day and throw away. And two, when people start throwing them away, other people keep picking them and reusing them. And that's not good. They are not washable. You cannot clean this mask. So the mask that we are promoting, that we are talking about, is the fabric mask like the one that I am wearing. Now, there are many types of these masks. Uh, there are those being made by our tailors. This is just, as you can see, this is Chitenji. And I'm going to spend most of my time talking about this mask. This is just Kitenji. I have my son who is a, a tailor, so they made it for me. We do not want the public to start using this type of mask. Because you'll start throwing them away. They are supposed to be burnt, incinerated at the hospital. When you start throwing, other people will pick and it will instead cause more disease. So the masks we are talking about, I have a number of them here. This is a cloth. This is a very tightly woven cloth. And uh, when they made it for me, I couldn't wear it comfortably because the fabric was so tight, the air does not move through very well. You get hot, so we, I kept removing it. That's not protective. Uh, there are other masks which are being supplied. This one is got from uh, someone who is making them. This uh, is also a mask, a fabric mask. I hear the fabric is from India, so it's not common. And there are different designs. Uh, there are different designs that are on the market. Now, so which mask should you wear? Which one are you going to choose? Uh, one, the mask you wear should allow you to breathe. It should let in air so that you can breathe comfortably. And we have found that cotton fabric, like this one, it allows you to breathe in properly. But it should block what comes out of you so that it doesn't spread so much. So uh, you have seen there has been a video circulating where they put a candle. Actually, when you wear this mask and you try to blow a, a candle, you will not. The air which comes out is very little. 
And if I modify it a bit, as I'm going to show you, because I've modified something on this one, it blocks what comes out of you. But it can also block germs to reach you if you modify it just a little. So which one are we recommending? One, the mask made largely of cotton. There could be some blends of uh, the fabric, but if you have cotton, it helps that the material is cotton. Two, we want it to have two layers. There, sh there should be two layers of the fabric, two layers in and out. So if you have a single one, it is not as protective, but it does not also allow you to do the necessary modification. So the mask should have two layers of cotton cloth and uh, the mask should also give you a pocket. It should give you a pocket where you put a filter. Because these are washable, they are rewashable, they are just like the clothes we wear. You should, it should be rewashable easily. You wash, if possible, spread in the sun, because the sun kills a lot of germs. And then iron it and put on again. So we don't have the problem of throwing them away. Secondly, it should give you a pocket. Now, when you look, um, let me just remove mine. Inside, it, there is a flap. It is double, but the top cloth is folded. And there is a pocket. The mask should be able to cover your nose. Putting on a mask and leaving your nose open is not difficult. I see one of my friends there, he's near the mask, but the nose is sticky. <laughs> you should be able to. But that's good. As soon as others are covering just be at the chin, that's not useful. Remember, the mask is your protection gadget. It's protecting you. We are not putting them on for security or for Ministry of Health. You are putting it on for your protection. We are releasing you to go out there, but the virus is still coming. Because our we and sometimes it takes time to find the virus. So this is your first line protection gadget. The people you are meeting, you don't know whether they have COVID or not. But if you have your mask on, it's going to be if you are putting a filter. If you don't put in a filter, it will not protect you, but it will protect others from you. Because when I breathe, whether with a filter or not, this keeps all the moisture. And the virus moves in those tiny droplets which will breathe out, which will cough out, which come out when you speak. So if I put this, I'm protecting you from me. If I add a filter, I'm also protecting me from you. So a mask must cover your nose. And you notice that when I'm touching my mask, I just am not pushing it. I am touching here. Okay. You notice that I keep touching here, make sure it's covering my nose. The mask should cover your mouth all the time. When you're talking, or when you are, when wherever you need to wear a mask, it should cover your mouth. <coughs> now, for some people, when you are beginning to wear, it will be uncomfortable. <laughs> but as you move along, you will get used to it. Okay? You get used to it, you find ways of adjusting. Secondly, the mask should extend. Actually, this one I told you to adjust. It should extend, because the other way the mask protects you, that you cannot touch parts close or at your mouth. I cannot touch my mouth. I cannot start touching my nose when I have a mask. When I try unconsciously, I'm going to find a barrier. So it protects you from your hands. From transferring the virus, which is on your hand, to your hand. So make sure that it is covering an adequate space so that it will not sneak through. Because I saw some people wearing the mask. 
then when the mouth itches, they will scratch. But don't try to push your hand beyond the mask. You are beating it to cover. So, um, that is what I can generally say about the mask. We are going to be higher.